Okay, uh, hello everyone. Um, I think last time we uh, we discussed the ratio test and root test and some strategy to find uh, convergences or divergences of the series. And uh, before that, I want to let you know that the I think last time the recording sessions, there was some uh, mistake, I think, in, in my system. So I put wrong slides to show. So I need to delete the YouTube uh, views. And uh, yeah, I think only one time, the Wednesday, last, last Wednesday, uh, the recording is actually on the audio, not really showing the, uh, the slides. So let me just review the last part of the last Wednesday, the ratio test and the root test. Okay. So in ratio test or root test, both of the series they need to find they need to find the the ratio. Okay. And we know that the ratio is actually less than one to be convergent. Okay. The ratio needs to be less than one. So if we compare between the terms uh, an plus one over an. Um, I think, can you uh, turn on the light, the front light there? Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. So if the value, the L, is less than one, which means that our actual uh, a problem to find the convergence, then we say that this is uh, absolutely convergent. Okay. Why absolutely? Because we need to use the absolute value. Okay. And if it is greater than one, it's divergent. And if it is equal one, then the ratio test is inconclusive. Okay. And the same way, okay, so ratio test, we have three options. The same way the root test has uh, the three, three same options. So you also need to find the L, okay? The value L, okay? Less than one, greater than one, and equal one, okay? Convergent, absolute convergent, divergent, and then it's the same, inconclusive. So basically the same option, okay? But the method is uh, a little bit different. Root test is you need to, need to uh, squaring with some power of N, okay? Of the absolute value of uh, AN. Okay. Uh, let me show you uh, the some examples. I think for the ratio, this is one of the example. Let me give you the other example for ratio and root. Okay, let's try this one first. So that's the series. We have sum uh, from n equal one until infinity of n with the power of n uh, over n factorial. Okay. And actually you can use directly the ratio test. You can use directly the ratio test and then simplify the, the formulation. And because the 
the terms inside here, it it must be positive, right? It must be positive, and it, it should be, right? Because if you check it, it will always be positive, right? So we don't really need the absolute value. The absolute value we need it if we don't really know whether this series will be positive terms or not. Okay. So we can directly go to ratio test. And let that just write a n plus one divide a n. So n n plus one. Okay. And I can write the N. So I can remove this, this, and this. And lastly, we have n plus one over n and n. Okay. Maybe right in the limit here. Okay, don't forget to write the limit. Okay. So what is this? What is anyone remember? Anyone else? What is equal to? Yeah, E. So this is the definition of E. Okay. And what is the conclusion? The series is The series is converge or diverge? Converge or diverge? Converge? Who is converge? Who says the series is converge? Diverge? Yeah, it's diverge, okay? Because E is uh, greater than one, okay? Let me write here, diverge. Diverges because he is greater than one. By ratio test, should be diverged. Okay. But the ratio test has some uh, limitations. Okay? For example, uh, 
use ratio tax to determine converge or diverge. Let's just say we are we want to uh, determine this, this the series of the harmonic series. This is really simple series. One over n and one over n squared. We know from the P series, right? We we can generate its converge or diverge, but how about if we using the ratio test? Okay. If you use the ratio test for one over n and one over n squared, it will be uh, interesting results. So let me write down the n. So this will be or n over n plus one. So this will be equal one, right? The second one, It's also a one, right? If we calculate the limit. So both are both are inconclusive. So at certain part of the series, okay, the ratio test will be not really useful. Okay. So this is one of the limitations of, of the ratio test. So if you are seeing any uh, series that can be um, can be solved by other methods rather than the ratio test, you can do that. Uh, you can do the, the other method. Ratio test can be helpful if you if you are sure that um, no other methods can really solve the, the the series, and you can use the ratio test. Most of the time it will be useful, but in some cases like this case, the simple series, uh, it will be not really useful for ratio test. So it will be equal one, which is we are not sure, right? If it's equal one, it's converse or diverge. But because this series of one over n and one over n squared, we know from just knowing the P series, we know that, uh, one of them is diverged, one of them is converged, right? So we just writing down the the P series to solve the problem. So P series. So if you have so if P is greater than one, it will be converged. If P is Less or equal one to be diverge, and sometimes when you remember the P series, it 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 might it might come um, handy, uh, and if you want to, for example, you want to use the comparison. One of the the best way to compare is the P series. Okay. So whenever you find any fractions that you can do some inequality with the P series, then you can go directly to comparison tests. That that's much more much more uh, simple, okay? Rather than the, the ratio test. Okay. 
But in general, most of their theories can be solved, and your textbook can be solved by ratio test. Okay. Except any fractions that involve uh, trigonometry, maybe it's not. Or any simple cases that you are really can um, solve by other method other than the ratio test, then just use other other method. And don't, don't do not use the ratio test. So that's the ratio test. Okay, uh, the other one, the root test. Let me go to the root test. For example, root test um, start. Usually you will see maybe something like this, okay? So any, any series with power, okay? any series with power of N, Definitely, you can go to uh, you can go for the root test. So, for example, the directly doing that. And it will give you this. And by doing the limit, you will get it's two over three, it's less than one, and it's converged. And second one, if you have n over n plus 1 with the power of n. If we apply the same method, We, we arrive at one, right? Maybe inconclusive from here. But how to solve this one? Okay, let's come back to the strategy. Use the difference test. Okay, this is the most uh, common approach, the difference test. So difference test, you need to test the limit of the sequence. The sequence is n, n plus 1 with the power of n. Oh, by the way, let me write or let me remind you what different divergence test is. Okay. So if the limit of a n, uh, if it's not equal to zero, then the series will be diverged, right? That's act the actual meaning for the divergence test. And what's the second definition? So it, it, if it is not zero, then it's diverge. And how about the converge? Limit should be? Limit should be zero. 
but careful, careful. You will be confused if you don't, don't understand what the definitions really are. The definition is the series converge if the limit It will be uh, different if I write if the limit zero, then the series converge. That's wrong. The, 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 the truth is, if the series converge, then the limit is zero. So do not, don't reverse this. Because if you reverse this, the whole, uh, conclusion will be wrong. And the way you see the problems will be also wrong. But the, 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 the first statement here is really important. And you can definitely go to check the limit of the series. Okay. So first, you need to see the series, uh, see the, the limit. If the limit is not zero, then definitely it will be different. But for the, for the convergence, Okay, it should be zero, but it's not always the case. You need to prove that it's converged with other methods first, okay? So that's the, uh, some of the uh, definition for difference test. And we can do these definitions on most of the cases, like this n with the uh, power of n uh, over n plus one, okay? Okay, so if we uh, rearrange this, become one, and then n plus one over n become become uh, this uh, equation here. So we rearrange this. Uh, wait, why is this equal? So what's this equal? This is the same, the same formula from before, right? It's E, so it will be one over E. So it's not zero. So we could say definitely it's diverged. okay? Diverge by divergence test. Okay. And that's why the test is called divergence test, not convergence test. Because definitely we can say something divergent when it's not zero. When it's zero, it might, it might be convergent, but it's not 100% convergent. We need to test other methods, okay? So that's the... Uh, the root test. Okay, let me just review some parts uh, until maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and then we can uh, move to the next uh, section of the, the chapter. Let me give you more example. Uh, this is ratio and root test. Uh, let me review from maybe chapter 11.4, Determine the series. Converge or diverge. Okay, 
two questions first. Okay, what is number A? One over L and N. One over L and N. So how do you how do you solve number A? Okay. So look at the uh, the functions or the series is ln, in which if the ln if it start with one, it will be problematic, right? So we start from two, then it it's much more. Uh, Makes sense. So uh, for n greater than two, the value will be this, right? Uh, 
every n that greater than two, the value of ln will be less than the n itself, right? So the value of one over ln n is greater than one over n. Okay. And then since the since this series is diverge, this is the P series, right? So conclusion. is diverge uh, by direct direct comparison test right Okay, so you just need to compare that and it's proven that it's different. And what about the number B? The same method you can apply. You can apply the comparison test for number B. But uh, the question is what you need to compare with. Okay? So every time you need to check the comparison test, see that the, 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 this equations. E to the n, right? So what you need to do is you need to observe this series of uh, because it's one plus cos n. The maximum value of cosine is one, right? So there will be maximum number of two, okay? So what you need to observe is two over e to the n. So you need to observe that. So we need to observe this, and we need to know whether this is converged or diverged. Okay. So what series is this? If we are expanding this. Uh, So it will be having the ratio of one over E, right? So if we expand the series, it will be the geometric series, okay? With one over E, one over E, one over E, multiply, 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 okay? And one over E is less than one. So by geometric series, this is converged. By geo series, so it's converges. And then our equations, it's less than Right? Okay. It would be always less than the two over e to the n. Right? Then the conclusions is diverge. So it's the same by uh, direct comparison test. Well, let me give you two more questions and then we can move on. Uh, test the series. 
for convergence or divergence. Here's two questions. Okay, sometimes for the um, for the alternating series, uh, you need to define uh, if it is converged, what kind of converges. You have the absolute and you have conditional. Sometimes you need to mention which 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 one of them. So from absolute and a conditional what kind of uh, if it is converged to what kind of convergence this is can you try can you try number one
Yeah, and then, and then, yeah, like I said before, uh, what kind of convergence? It's absolute or conditional. Why? And you need to prove with it with, with mathematics. <laughs> you cannot say convert effort, just words. You need to prove that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so first thing, whenever you find alternate series, okay, you can observe the alternate series by two parts, okay? The alternate one and then the absolute value, okay? So first, let me write this, um, write this series as And let me uh, let me make sure that with the alternate series, I can find something. Okay. So B n is is this part. Okay. And if we check some parts of the number or some parts of the n, uh, if we start from one, two, three. If you if you plug in one, one minus one zero, uh, it, it start from zero and then two, it's positive. So it start positive from two. So when n greater or equal zero uh, two, uh, the sequence b n. If we are plug in two three nine and then Uh, three, one, two, it's getting bigger, right? And if you plug in four, it's getting bigger again. So we're sure that this BN is decreasing, okay? Or you can prove that uh, BN plus one is less than BN. Okay. This sentence is enough. This uh, when n greater or equal to b n is decreasing, that's enough. No need to, for anything to prove, unless you are told to do to do the proving. And then uh, the other part is the limit of b n. This is zero, right? So from here, by alternating series, it's convergent, okay? But we are not done yet, okay? We're not done yet. We can look up here. If we are absolute value of all this uh, series, okay? So we are ended up with the series of n squared minus one and cubed plus one, okay? And then observe uh, 
if you want to test the series, the series, it's better to see, see this n, okay, n squared, n cubed. So the best way to observe is one over n, right? Right. So observe the one over n, okay. This one over n is diverge. It's the P series, right? And you can you can use the limit uh, uh, let's say this is a n this is p n this is another comparison test it's limit comparison test so this and then divide by one over n or we apply by n. And we got the uh, limit, this n cubed minus n. It's one, right? So in limit comparison test, okay, limit comparison test, if this is C, okay, this is C. If C is greater than one, then we have two possibility, both converge or both diverge, right? But because this is diverge, this one of brand is really diverse, so it's both diverse. So conclusions, conclusion, the series of n, n squared minus one and q plus one is diverge. Okay, so we have, by alternating series, it's convergent but its absolute value is diverge. Okay. So total this um, series is conditionally convergent. Okay, so whenever you find any alternate sign, you need to try not only the alternating series method, but you need to put the absolute value and check the, the, the series on that absolute value. Okay. If the, uh, the conclusion have divergent convergence, then it will be conditionally convergent. If both are converged, then it's absolutely convergent. Okay. Okay, that's number one. Uh, any questions? Any questions so far? Okay, let me go through this tangent. Uh, let me go to the next page.
Okay, we have tangent 1 over n. <coughs> what method you can try for the tangent? Okay, remember uh, in calculus one, you have the identity for trigonometry limit. Okay? So if you have limit, right? Okay, so why don't we try to find some, some value? It is one over n, right? So Let's try to define by one over n. And let's say to make a, this limit, then we can do the limit comparison test actually, right? So <clears throat> we can do here, right? And we say that the bn is, let's say one over n. So we want to solve the tangent one over n and then one over n okay and tangent is like a sign because tangent is sine over cos so it's just supposed to be equivalent with this sign okay but let us let's try this So, or if you want, because it's, uh, if you plug in infinite here and here, tangent will be zero, one over n will be also zero. So you can, you can check the L'Hopital rule also. So you, 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 can, you can try the L'Hopital rule. One over n uh, min minus one minus one should be negative. What? Uh, oh wait, wait. Let me just write that. And in tangent, what's the first derivative of tangent? Was the first derivative? Yeah, second square. Second square, one over n. And then don't forget the chain rule to multiply with the chain rule. Okay. Oh, wait, that is yes. the chain rule of one over n is minus one over n squared. Oh, it's still in the limit. Oh, I forget to run the limit. This cancellation here. And second it's like a cosine. So when secant is zero, so you have a limit. Let me write. This is one, right? And it's 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 greater than zero, which means we have two possibility, both converge or both diverge.
and because because the this one over n is diverge, right? P series. So the conclusion. of tangent one over n also ciphers. This is true by limit comparison test. Okay, that's it for the review and we can move on to the um, 11.8. Okay, any questions? Any questions from here? Okay. So supposedly, if you have sine and one over n, you can do the same thing. And I think sine will be much more uh, easier because you can also exchange the the variables to make it uh, similar to the limit identity of sine. Okay. okay. Uh, let me move on to the 11.8. This is the, the power series. Okay, most of the cases from 11.3 until 11.6, it's all the method for um, series of A and So the series of a n, uh, we are just focusing on how to find whether this is uh, converge or diverge, right? Okay. Now in, in the power series, we will have the uh, cn and then xn. So the power series will have the C is the constant and, and another X, okay, another variable here. So if we expand, if we expand the power series, Let's say it start from zero. So it will start from C zero plus C one X one plus C two X two plus C three X three and so on. That's what you call this the power series. Okay. You will have C and X. So the power series, okay? So power series, like the other method that we have discussed, it may converge or it may diverge. But because we have X now, it will be converged on some X 
and if we also can be diverged on another x. And this is the the um, the interesting part in power series. So we will uh, define the the x okay? in which part of x the series will be converged, and in part in in which part of x the series will be diverged. So we are not only uh, dealing with n, but we are dealing with also the variable x. Okay. And to begin with, let's say if we have the cn is equal one for all n. So it will be x n, and then it will be one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x four plus da, da, da. This is the series that we we have discussed before, right? This is the geometric series, right? With the ratio is x, okay? So this is the geo series with ratio is x, okay? And in geo series, okay, to be converged, the ratio should, should be less than one. So, From negative one until one, the series converges. Let's say we have um, if if x to to prove what. Uh, the this this power series. Let's say we have x equal half x equal two. It it this will be half n, and this will be two n. This half will be uh, start from start from zero. This will be one plus half plus one over four plus one over eight plus that, that, that. And we know that this is converged, right? We already discussed this at the very beginning of the class. And here we have one plus two plus four plus eight, and it will be increasing and increasing, and it will be, it will be diverges. Okay. So in general form, so generally, okay, let me move here. So generally, this is the form, okay, we have some A. Because we may have some interval of x. Okay. So this is called power series in x minus a or centered power series centered at a. Or power series about a. 
And why we need to write down the A here? Remember that if A uh, is equaling X, it's the same, if, if A is the same value of X, all this X minus A will be zero, right? So the meaning is if we know the part of the converge and diverge from the sum of x, okay? So we will know from the interval okay, nearby the a, we will know when the value will be converged, when the value will be diverged. And we will learn uh, the terms is called the interval of convergences. So convergence is not about the exact value of the convergence, but the convergences, it might be the interval. Okay. So we will have the interval of convergences. So we'll have the radius, like a circle. So if you have, um, you have like a line number, maybe this is one, maybe this is uh, four, maybe this is two, this is zero. So maybe, maybe around here, that's the interval of convergence, maybe. Okay. So that's, that's uh, how you uh, see the x minus a part, okay? For example, let me just go through by some examples. And from these examples, we can make some conclusions. Let's go to uh, example. Uh, for what values of x uh, does the uh, series converge? Okay, to begin with, let's just denote the, the an is uh, this value. And let's just do ratio test. Okay, so ratio test. And then we can solve this and it will be x minus three. So, oh, don't forget the limit, limit n, and this n, n plus one, and then having the x minus three. It's having the absolute value there. Okay. So remember that this is one, right? So the the answer is this absolute value of x minus three as n going to infinity. Okay. So to be converged, to be converged is this values need to be less than one. And to be diverge,
this value need to be greater than one. So this will be, or let me just write the, the conclusion will be two, four, and so converge and diverge. So you will have the interval. But it's actually not really uh, finished because I haven't checked when the absolute value of x minus three equal one. Okay, because it, it gives no conclusions if it is equal one, right? Inconclusive. So if it is equal one, x is two, right? So we need to check that the x equal two. So check. Check x equal to, and check x equal four, okay? Because x minus three can be uh, four and can be two, right, right? So if if x equal four. The series will be a n will be one over n, in which its harmonic, its p series, is diverged, right? If x equal two, what will happen? It will be the alternate series. The a n will be this, right? And by alternating series, it's converge. Converge by alternating series. So the, the conclusion, uh, the given power series converge or Two, it's include two, but not include four. Okay. Okay, now the other examples. The same questions, but different series. Uh, let me write the series. So n factorial um, x with the power of n. And for all the cases in power series, to prove the, uh, or to find the value of x, we just using the ratio test. 
So leave it. Okay, so this can solve this. And this is can solve this. So so we have n plus one and then just x. So the conclusion, if we have n plus one here, and this n is by default for all x not equal zero, this is already diverged, right? Because of the infinity. So, uh, series is diverge. when x is not zero. So to be converged, to be converges, so how, how to make this all, to, it's, it's converged. So when x is not zero, it's, it, 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 it will be uh, diverges. But the, the only way the series is converges is x should be zero. Okay. Converge only when x equals zero. Note that uh, this can be true okay, because the limit is only applied in n, not x. Okay? So don't think that, OK, infinite multiplied by 0 of 0. No, no, it's different. Okay? This is the limit of n, the left one. This is x. So it's different, different approach from what we have done before. Okay? If this is n, then uh, this will be different, right? But because this is n, and n is going to infinity, but x is a different variables, right? Different variables. And we consider the x to be dealt with first. So to be converges, the only way is x should be 0. So all will be 0. Okay, that's the second one. And the third one, this will be the last, and we will uh, conclude what we have learned. Uh, same questions, but different series. So this is the series, x with the power of n, and then uh, 2n and then factorial. So as the limit uh, for ratio, so again, it's just using the ratio test and then use the calculations 
limit uh, and approaching uh, infinity. Okay, so xn will be canceling this. And now we um, we figure this two n factorial two n plus two factorial is two n plus two two n plus one and then two n factorial. So we can cancel this. And we will have absolute value of x and then 2n plus 2 multiplied by 2n plus 1. And if we solve the limit, it will be equal to 0, right? Which is less than 1. So now, now it's it's uh, different from the previous one. Now, if we plug in the n, if we solve the n, it will be zero. So for all x, it would be zero, right? So it's converged for all x. Okay. Previously. It only converts when x equals zero because the n itself is already infinite. Now the n is zero, the limit of when n is approaching infinity. So all x can be converted if this happens. Okay. There is a converges. for all values of x. Okay, now we have three examples and we can conclude from these three examples, we have three possibility for power series. Let me write here. This is called the, the interval of convergences.
Okay, so there's a theorem. So for a power series, Cn x minus a of n, there are only three possibilities. First one, the series converges only when x equal a. Okay. Two, the series converges for all x. And the third one, there are positive number. Let's say we define the R such that this series converges if X minus A less than R and diverge if x minus a greater than r. So the, the third one is actually our, our first example. Uh, the first and the second one is the last two example. R is the radius of convergence. And here in the number one case, R is zero. And the second case, R is infinite. And by definition, interval of convergence, this is power series or uh, interval that consists all values of x for which uh, the series converges. Okay, for number one, the interval is single point x equal a, right? Or, oh yeah, just like that. Um, in the case two, interval is all x in case three interval or we can write a minus r less than x less than a plus r So we can write this as so if this is a, this is a minus r, this is a plus r.
this is convergence And actually, here there will be um, more possibility. Okay, depends on the series and equations. It might be include this or not, or include this or not. Okay, because I, I will write just not including both, like uh, the example before. It might include. Okay, if the series converge, and you need to test the series if it is converge or not, or diverge. Okay. Let me write some table to help you uh, see the point. Let me write this series. Uh, radius of convergence and interval of convergence. If I write R is the radius of convergence, I is interval of convergence. This is just example that we have done before. From here, two is included, but four is not. And then this is the radius is zero. So the interval is also zero. The radius is infinite, so all the x will be converges. Let me give you just uh, one question, but maybe we need to solve that in uh, Wednesday. The questions is fine. Radius of convergence and interval of convergence. So negative three with the power of n, uh, multiplied with x with the power of n, divided by square root of uh, n plus one, okay? Uh, the method is the same, using the ratio test and then checking the limit, and then you need to make some conclusion at the very end. Okay, I think I will stop here and we'll be continuing next Wednesday.